is who are the people you are eating? Are they part of the group or are they considered outside of the group? It's what you call endo-cannibalism or exo-cannibalism. That's one thing. And then it's why you, you would do it. Is the, what is the intention behind this consumption? Is it ritualistic or uh, purely uh, functional? And what we know from the ethno-archaeological record is that usually endocannibalism, so you do that on the people from your group, from is your group. most of the time related to mortuary practices and or survival strategy. And exocannibalism, so the cannibalism you do on people that you consider outside of your group, are also in many cases ritualistic, but they can be in a very large sphere about, you know, conflict between population. Some would consider mortuary. Sometimes it's really to destroy, you know, but the intention is much more difficult to approach because there's such a variety of intention that could lead to this kind of behavior. But the common ground is like when it's practiced against people that you consider outside of your group, it's in many cases related to uh, some level of conflict. And in this case, we have one very strong argument to propose that mm. this cannibalism that is clearly commensal, nutritive that seems to be for a nutritive purpose, is actually performed on people that might have been seen as outside of the, I don't know, mm. Ellen, or if you want to yeah. extrapolate it. And let's talk about how we know that it's outside the group. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, a good thing I want to go into maybe. And um, wh what do you see on the bones? I, I noticed they extracted the marrow. What kind of evidence do you see on the bones that tells you that it had to have been can They were eating it. Let's maybe get into the details of that. So how are they outsiders and what's the evidence on the bone for cannibalism? 